You know how every once in a while somebody drags an old car out of a barn, puts a fresh tank of gas in, turns the key, and it fires right up? Yeah, that's never going to happen with an electric vehicle. You're never going to see someone pulling a 100-year EV out of a barn and have it drivable. More likely, it's going to burn down the barn after some time sitting. You found Stashed. I'm Pat, firefighter, mechanical engineer, and battery guy. Earlier this week, the Jacobstown Volunteer Fire Company responded to a Tesla that spontaneously caught on fire. The thing is, that car had been sitting for over two years. Uncharged, unused, it was just sitting behind a business. It had low miles, but it had been in a crash and declared a salvage. From the pictures, the damage looked fairly minor, and I really don't think the battery was damaged in the crash. So I'm really wondering here, were the batteries or the high voltage system damaged, or did it just fail because it was sitting there quietly for two years? It lit up just before 1 p.m. on Monday. Now, I gotta say, the Jacobstown crew, they did a great job. This is one of those situations where you're already behind the eight ball the moment you get dispatched. The car's on fire, it's electric, and you really don't know whether the battery's involved or not yet. It's a tough spot to be in, but realistically, the car is already on fire. What are we saving? It's more about protecting exposures at that point. They did knock down the fire, and at that time, it wasn't really clear if that battery pack had been involved. After about two hours of monitoring the situation, they made the call and the car was towed to the salvage yard. But here's where it gets interesting, and honestly, this is one part that I want every firefighter, tow operator, and business owner to hear. 27 hours later, that same Tesla reignited. This time, there is no doubt the battery is involved. And a secondary fire isn't that rare. In fact, this is why I remind people once an electric vehicle has caught fire or been seriously damaged in a crash, it needs to be stored at least 50 feet away from any other exposures in the tow yard. That's any other vehicles, buildings, or basically anything you don't want to burn down. I get it, 50 feet really isn't realistic in most yards, but unfortunately that's the guidance for now. I do think we'll have some scientific data in the near future that should shrink that number down, but this incident is a good example of why that guidance exists. Now, again, the Jacobstown crew did a solid job here as well. They did exactly what I recommend. They knocked down the cabin fire and they let the battery burn out to exhaust all that stranded energy inside the battery pack, essentially get rid of all the cells, or at least the vast majority of those cells. Since there was heavy equipment on scene, they were also able to shift that vehicle on its side to give them access to the battery if needed. Now, at this point, you don't know what you don't know, but they did something I wouldn't recommend. They placed the vehicle in a dumpster, that's fine, but then they covered it with moist sand. Now, I get why they did it, they were trying to control any possible reignition and keep the whole thing contained. And in this case, there really wasn't much left to burn after that second fire. But here's the deal with sand. It's not magic. If the battery wants to go into thermal runaway again, it's going to do it. Whether it's under sand, dirt, underwater, concrete, it really doesn't matter. Will the sand contain thermal runaway? Absolutely. But it also causes some other issues. How do you dispose of the whole thing? Right now, it's a major challenge to get a scrapyard to take an electric vehicle, a damaged electric vehicle, or a functional or end-of-life electric vehicle. They don't want to deal with the batteries. Cover that EV in sand and it becomes even a bigger mess. They did eventually find a scrapyard to take the vehicle and they basically, they're going to pull it out of the dumpster. They're going to shake the sand off, uh, take the electric vehicle, but somebody else is still going to have to come and take care of that sand for disposal, some type of remediation company. So my take, sand isn't necessary and it complicates things. A better approach, make sure it's in a safe, open location with nothing around it that could burn. Putting it in a dumpster is fine. It's going to at least contain things if there is a third fire. This was a good outcome considering the circumstances. Nobody got hurt, the fire didn't spread, and the crews handled it well. And look at this first fire. Look at this uh, propane pig right here. They did get pretty fortunate. But remember, old electric vehicles sitting for years, they're not harmless. We need some style of decommissioning plan out there, some way to get rid of those end-of-life batteries. This is just another example showing that they can catch fire without warning. Props again to the Jacobstown crew and everyone else out there. Remember, stay aggressive, stay smart, and stay safe.